we speak your name. John 17, verse 3. This is life eternal that they might know thee. That's the name, thee. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me. That's a thee, that's a me. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come unto me. That's a me, a thee, and a me. Come on, what's his name? Matthew 16, verse 16. Thou art the Christ, the who? Son of the living God. What's his name? Matthew 27, 54. Surely this was the Son of God. Uh, little man came up here. He climbed... Up the sycamore tree. Zacchaeus was a wee little man. You join me. But when I say stop, you stop. Zacchaeus was a wee little man. And a wee little man was he. He climbed up in the sycamore tree. For the Lord he wanted to. And as the Lord was passing by. He looked up in the tree. Pause. Pause. Matthew 10 verse 30. <laughs> I better get down. Before I break something. Yes, <laughs> my sister said yes. Yeah, Matthew 10, verse 30. Even the hairs on your head are numbered. Next question. Does he number the devils between your ears? Yes. Does he number the devils between your ears? Luke 7, the woman had her hair. What was she doing with it? Broke the alabaster box. With her hair, she did what? Yeah, did that woman, did, had she had a head full of devils? Yes. Does he have the number? Yes. Mark 16, verse 9, out of whom he cast seven devils. She's preaching the first sermon. Is God's business to change the hairdo or the brain do? Brain. And I stubbed the subject this morning, the brain do. <laughs> and that's a little more difficult than the hairdo. Would you agree? Say amen. amen. So Zacchaeus went up into the tree and he said, now Matthew 9, verse 9. One finger in Matthew 9, verse 9, one in 12, uh, 12 22 of Hebrews. And Zacchaeus said, no, Jesus said, Zacchaeus what? I, I'm going to your house today. Matthew 9 verse 9, Matthew's writing about himself. Matthew is sitting at the tax table, works for what? The IRS. Jesus walks by. <laughs> and two words to Matthew, 9 verse 9. What does he say? Two words. Follow me. Now, Zacchaeus, I'll follow you. Matthew, you follow me. But they're all going to the same place, the kingdom of God. Hebrews 12, verse 22. Ye have come into the, what's it say? Mount, come on, Hebrews 12, 22. Mount Zion, the city of the who? Living God. And then there's a comma, and it calls it, what kind of Jerusalem? No, 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 no. Not in that one. I, John, saw the holy city coming down out of heaven, a new Jerusalem. No. But in Hebrews 12, 22, comma, the what kind of Jerusalem? Somebody look at their Bible. Hebrews 12, 22. Look, if you were talking, I'd check everything you said against the Bible. Matthew 17, a Berean. These are more noble than those over there in Syracuse. Why? The preacher says it and they check it in the Bible. Hebrews 12, 22. What kind of Jerusalem? Thank you. Heavenly. Now, dear friends, that is not the Jerusalem below. That is the Jerusalem above. And if you ever think you're going to enter there... You've got to change how you think here. Now, you notice it says Armenian mind shift. I cannot, I've got the Lord, I believe the Lord's poured it in. I've got two hours worth of stuff. Come back at 5.30 for part two. I can't fit it into an hour. Come back at 5.30. 5.30, Armenian mind shift concluded. So the Lord wants to change our minds. Now, Philippians 2.5, I'm going to start and I'm going to end on the same verse. Philippians 2.5, let this mind be in you. Now, pause. We all know what the rest of it says, don't we? I'm going to change it. Let this mind be in you, the same mind that is in heaven. Is it okay to say that? The mind that is in heaven. The heavenly mindset. Hebrews 12, 22. Now, I'll ask questions. You give answers. Is there a church up in heaven? Yes. What's the name of the church? Verse 23. What's the name of the church? It's not the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. It's the... Somebody look in the Bible. What is it? Yeah. The general assembly and the church of the what? 
Well, who's the firstborn? Matthew 1, 25, her firstborn son. Now, when you go into that church, I don't know who preaches. But I know this. It says church in verse 23. In verse 22, last part, who goes to church there? Verse 22, last part. An innumerable company of angels. Place filled up with angels. I wonder who preaches. Maybe Jesus, right? Don't you want to go there? He must change you here. Our subject is morning. How to get changed here so we can go there. You got to think like they think up there, but you learn to think that down here. Now, so I'd like to first study, how do they think up there? And then how do we think down here? And then heaven's plan to get us down here to think like those people up there. How do they think up there? Well, let's get it right out of the Bible. Oh, Lord, how do you think up there? Now, I'm going to take verses, and I'm going to, I'm going to blend them together. I'm going to start with John 3, 16, Romans 8, 32. When God saw man fall, Genesis 2, 16, 17, you eat, you die, they ate, they die. Was that a call for help to the courts of heaven? Man who was created in God's image had what? Fallen. Was that a cry for help? How did they think up there? First step in the mindset of heaven. The first step, John 3, 16, Romans 8, 32. He that spared not his own son. Why? Because God so loved the world, he gave. That's how the first step. The, now, by the way, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Are they united in their thinking? Yeah, sure they are. They are. So they, had a, they, they knew what they would do. First step, let's send who? What's his name? Jesus. You know, the name. Let's send Jesus. Jesus went. Step two. That's step one. What's step two? Step two, 2 Corinthians 5.19. To wit, God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. I'm not trying to put the presence of the Godhead here, but I am trying to put the focus of the Godhead here. Jesus the Son and God the Father. To wit, God was in Christ reconciling this world. Now, Father, the Son, who's next? John 14, 26, John 15, 26. They say the same thing. They're going to send who? The Comforter. Yeah, Jesus is going to pray, going to pray. God the Father in Jesus' name is going to send the Comforter. John 15, 26. John 14, 26 says the same thing. So, Father and the Son, this is how they think up there. Father, the Son, they're not thinking about themselves, they're thinking about now, that's the Father, that's the Son, that's the Holy Ghost. Hebrews 12, 22, last part, an innumerable company of angels. Well, what about them angels? Hebrews 1, 14, what about the angels? What, are they not ministering spirits? Next word, sent. To minister to who? Heirs of salvation. Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, and all the angels. Their focus was where? 1 Corinthians 4 verse 9. We are made a spectacle to the world, to angels, and to men. This is how they think up there. Well, I wonder how we think down here. <laughs> In the heavenly Jerusalem, Jesus, it, the church was named after him. But when he came down to church down here, John 1 11, he came into his own and... His own received him not. Isaiah 53, 2, there was no beauty in him that we should desire him. Uh, somebody's thinking is upside down. Thank you. And I'll just give you what my brother just said. I'll give you six, seven verses that say the same thing. Proverbs 14, verse 12, there is a way that seemeth right to Luke Keith, but the end thereof is the way of death. Proverbs 16, 25 says the same thing. Isaiah 55, verse 8, My ways aren't your ways. My thoughts aren't your thoughts. I'm going toward John 10, life, but the thief comes but to kill, steal, and destroy. You're going toward death. I'm going toward life. John 18, 36, My kingdom is not of this world. Now, you hold that thought for about five minutes. My kingdom is not of this world. Two kingdoms, kingdom of light, kingdom of darkness, kingdom of truth, kingdom of error, kingdom of right, kingdom of wrong, kingdom of evil, kingdom of good. Two kingdoms, they are as distinct as the night is from the day. 
Jesus and the devil as distinct as the night is from the day. We're fighting to get back into heaven. The devil, John 8, 44, he abode not in the truth. Verse 6 of Jude, they kept not their first estate. They wanted out, we want in. The devil wants us to think like him, so we can't go in. Christ wants us to think like him, so he can't keep us out. You choose this day. Joshua 24, 15, choose ye this day how you're going to think. Isn't that simple? That's how they think up there. But how do we think down here? Now, we're going to zip through very quickly the three groups of individuals that people the place called the earthly Jerusalem. John chapter 4, we start with the Samaritans. The half-breed religion, when Solomon died, his son Rehoboam took the throne, and he said, you ain't seen nothing yet. He's going to toughen things up. Ten tribes walked away, intermarried with the Assyrians in the northern kingdom called Samaria, and became known as the Samaritans. Boy, the Jews hated the Samaritans, didn't they? John 4, what kind of woman's at the well? Samaritan woman. And Jesus walks up, and he begins to uh, have a dialogue. He talks about the living water. Okay. He, ta oh. he talks about the living water, right? And uh, he's trying to get her to drink. That water will change your what? Your hair do or your brain do? Thank you. <laughs> you know, trying to get her to change your brain do. Because her thinking is, is, her thinking is marred. Because... Uh, I have no husband. That's what she said, right? I have no husband. And what did Jesus say? You, you, thou sayest well. Right? You, you, yeah, you, don't have, you don't have a husband. You got what? You got, you, got, you, got a, you got a closet full of husbands. That is not thinking like they think up there. You need a brain do. Redo. Refurb. Recreated brain. Let this mind be in you. That's verse 5. I end where I started. And so as he talked to the lady, and she changes the subject to worship, our fathers worshipped on evil. She changes the subject to worship. And then Jesus leaves his subject, adultery, and goes to her subject, religion. John 4, verse 22. Woman, ye worship who? John 4, 22. Who does she worship? Somebody read it. John 4, 22. Ye worship, ye know not who. Woman, you don't know who you worship. You don't know, you go to church? Oh, yeah? Why? Oh, I don't know. Who do you worship? Uh, I don't know. Call upon the name. Uh, whose name? She doesn't know. That's what the Bible teaches. Acts 17, 23. Paul's going into the Areopagus in Athens, Mars Hill. He's about to fly high with the philosophers. It tells you in verse 23, first part devotion service, last part worship service. In the middle, they worship who? 1723 of Acts. Who do they worship? The unknown God. They don't know who they worship. They don't know who they worship. Who you worship? Well, we're not sure. We put it on our idol there. Unknown God. And of course, Paul's desire was to declare to them the identity of the unknown God. Verse 7, Acts 17, verse 28, in him we live, we move, and we have our being. That's the God you don't know. Were those, uh, and that's the Gentiles, right? The Gentiles. Were they in Isaiah 60, verse 2? Gross darkness. Yes. We're the Samaritans. But who had the grossest darkness of all? Matthew 15, verse 9. In vain they do worship me. Now keep your finger in Matthew 15, 9. Take your other two. Put it in Jeremiah 10, Isaiah 2. Because the Bible tells you. It gives the answers. We don't have to be in doubt. It tells you the problem of how we think down here. Now, Matthew 15, 9. Then uh, uh, Jeremiah 10, 3. By the way, the last part of 9 is coming out of Matthew 15, verse 8. Yet Matthew is getting some information inspired by the Holy Ghost out of Jeremiah 9 and 10 as he writes Matthew 15. So Matthew 15, verse 9, in vain they do worship me. Now, uh, uh, Jeremiah 10, verse 3. 
The customs of the people are what? Vain. Thank you. And then it tells you what they do. You know, they go out. It doesn't use the word idle. You got to go out, they see a tree. What do they do with it? They cut her down, right? And then they paint it up, they stand it up. You know, they, 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 they work on these, uh, they paint it, they stand it. They, now Isaiah 2 verse 8. Their land is full of what? Isaiah 2 8. Come on. Somebody run. Idols. And then, comma, they worship the, the works of their own hands. They see now Isaiah 10, uh, uh, Jeremiah 10, 3 and 4, Isaiah 2, verse 8, put them together. There's a tree. The work, the axe, the hands of the workmen, they cut it down, they carve it up, they paint it up, they stand it up, and then they fall down and worship it. Who are they worshiping? Let me ask for a different answer. Thank you. Who are they worshiping? Yeah, who are they worshiping? Yes, the work of their hands. Who are they worshiping? Themselves. Thank you. Themselves. Now, back to Matthew 15, verse 9. In vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of who? Men. They worship themselves. Matthew 15, verse 2. Why do your disciples transgress the traditions of the elders? They worship men down here but up there they worship God now the Lord fear God and give glory Revelation 14 verse 7 give glory to him instead of yourself that's the problem with the way we think down here well what kind of car does that man drive what kind of house does that man live in what kind of education does that man have? What kind of legs does Beyonce have? What kind of, no, that's how we think down here. It's on the outside. What kind of education does that man have? What color is the skin on that woman? That's how we think down here. God told Samuel, as he's going to pick the good man, good, big, look, good looking Eliab, I don't see how you see. You look on the but I look on the it's not a hairdo you need it's a brain do <laughs> that's it a brain do so that's some of the problem that's the problem my purpose isn't to talk about the problem is to see what the answer is and that's it so this is how they think up there this is how we think down here something's got to change in Malachi 3 verse 6 I am the Lord I what change not you can't walk with me Amos 3 3 can two walk together unless it be what agreed then something's got to change and I'm not going to change because Matt uh, Hebrews 13 verse 8 Jesus Christ the same he's not going to we wait all year he's not going to change the Lord said this is how I think I cannot change the way I think aren't you glad the Lord can't change his purposes oh yes praise the Lord now the answers so I, uh, Exodus 15 verse 3 Exodus 15, verse 3. Does the Lord know something about war? Nobody said anything in the church. Does the Lord know something about fighting? Oh, yes. In fact, all those names, Isaiah 9, 6, Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, 11, verse 2. You got his name as, uh, when you pray, say, Our Father. And you got uh, uh, Matthew 125, firstborn, Matthew 121, Savior, Matthew 123, Emmanuel. What's his name in Exodus 15, verse 3? What's his name? Come on, friends. The man of war. That's his name. Man of war. Does he know something about making war? Now let's ask Joshua. Joshua 5, 13 and 14. <laughs> Joshua turns around. Ooh, who does he see? Come on, who does he see? Yeah, what's he got in his hand? The sword drawn, and Joshua says, are you for us or for our adversaries? What are you going to do with that sword? And Jesus says, verse 14, I come to you. How does he identify himself? Thank you. The captain of the Lord's host. Next question, what is the host? What is the host of heaven? It's the angels. Now, does the Lord know something about fighting? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Does he know something about fighting? And there was a war, Revelation 12, verse 7. There was a war in, and, Michael, and, 
His angels fall. Here's the problem with us. We, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 12, see through a glass darkly. Right. Now we see through a glass darkly. But then, face to face, now I know in part, but then I shall know even as I am known. Dear friends, the angels have seen it from the beginning right until the end. The angel that came to Zechariah is the same one that went to Daniel, and it's the same one that comes to our church this morning. They, uh, they, learn that they don't get old and die. They know how to fight. They have been sent under the direction of the Godhead to fight this last battle with us, not against us. Psalm 34, verse 7. Now, it's the war. So I'd like to study how they fight. Because John 18, 36, my kingdom was, is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would what? Fight. Now, Jesus said, I'm going to fight, but not the way you fight. Because I don't think the way you think. How does he fight? Well, John, uh, John 18, verse 11. Peter put up the sword. That's not how I fight. Matthew 26, 52. If you live by the sword, you it says perish by, you die by the sword. That's not how we're going to fight. Well, Lord, how are we going to fight? Now, this is the hard part. That is so easy. But now, this is the hard part. You can't change the way you think. Let me change that. God cannot change the way you think without your consent. Is that true? Yes. All right. Now, the Lord wants to show us how he thinks. Then we have a choice. Yeah, I want to think like that. Right? I want to think like that. How do you think, Lord? <laughs> ah, and this is the hard part. Matthew, 5, uh, Ma uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. He's giving how God's mind works. Matthew 5, how people, if they ever walk into heaven up there, will first learn to think like that here. It says it directly in Matthew 15, verse 3. Blessed are the poor in, for what is theirs? Theirs is the kingdom of God. That's it. You want to see the kingdom of God? Mm -hmm. Matthew 18, verse 3. Unless you become converted and as a child. You'll never see the kingdom of God. You have to uh, be blessed or to, yeah. Next verse, Matthew 18, 4. Yeah, the hu humble, the humility of a child. Now, back to Matthew 5, verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Now, Matthew 5, verse 4. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be. Is Jesus the king of comfort? Yeah. Did he send a comforter to comfort us? Is there some mourning in this world of sin? But do we have some comfort? Yeah, blessed are they that mourn. You've you got to mourn over your sins. They call it uh, uh, your, 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 uh, your, your uh, what, what's, what, all kind of, Joel 2.13, rend your heart and not your garment. You're crying between the porch and the altar. In this last day of atonement, we've got to be mourning over, look in the mirror, God have mercy on me. I'm a man of unclean lips in the midst of what? A people of unclean lips, Isaiah 6.5. You know, when we look in the mirror, we've got to see it like it is. Would you agree? Don't look too long. You just take, a, take, a, take, a, take a one good glance and 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved. Once you see the mess, don't look at the mess, look at him. Hebrews 12 verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher. Well, how about Philippians 1 verse 6? Being confident in this very thing. He which hath begun a good work will finish it. Matthew 17 verse 8, they saw no man save Jesus. So let's look in the mirror. Oh, God, Lord, help me. I'm undone. Then let's look to Christ. And he'll change how we think. Unless you think the way you think is the right way to think. And then he can't do anything for it. Now, Matthew 9, verse 9, follow me. Matthew 10, Matthew had a party. Now, Matthew 9, verse 11. Matthew 9, verse 11. Your master doth eat with who? Publicans and sinners. And they would never go into a house like that. But Jesus did. That's how he thinks. <laughs> did he give uh, Matthew a brain do? No, did he? Did he give Zacchaeus a brain do? Yeah. Now, I want to study uh, probably like a mass brain do. Jesus, the man of war, wants to help his people this morning. And I'd like just to take about nine Bible verses and put them together. It's God's plan to help us in the Victory Seventh-day Adventist Church. And believe me, everybody in this church, including yours truly, we need help. 
And I say, we need all the help we can get. And Jesus said, don't you worry, Ephesians 1 verse 6. You're accepted in the beloved, and I got all the help you need. So uh, let's, let's take it piece by piece. Jesus is faced with a church where he sees strife among us who'd be accounted what? There was a strife among them. What's the strife in the upper room? What's the strife? Yeah, some said position. Some said who'd be first. Some said counted the greatest. And whatever words you put on it, it's the same dynamic you need a brain do. Because if you, be honest now, if you ask the disciples, what makes you great? Who'd be the greatest? Who's the first? James and John wanted that position, right? The highest. What did you do that earned you the title of the highest? Because Ecclesiastes 5.8 says, God is higher than the highest. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 8. So we ask ourselves, look, I'm the greatest in the church. You ask me, well, what makes you great? And I say, what? Hmm. I'm the greatest in the church. Yeah, I got a position. I'm the GC president, or I'm the head of the chain gang in the prison. You know, wherever you're at, you can look for a position, right? Can't you? Yeah, the devil looked for a position. Yeah, he always wanted to what? Rise up. John 3, verse 30, he must increase. And John the Baptist said what? I must decrease. That's how they think in heaven. Matthew 11, verse 11, no greater prophet ever born of a woman than John. That's the kind of man that goes into heaven. There's a strife among us. I'm the greatest. What makes you great? Well, we got, we got through position. How about education? Now, is it possible? Remember Revelation 14, 6 now. I say, all this, I say this to say this. Revelation 14, 6. I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach where? Yes. That's Matthew 24, 14. Dear friends, if you think like they think on earth, and you walk up into rice field in Hanoi, and you see, I'll just use myself. I'm tall. What color is my skin? Come on, what color is my skin? White. The man in Hanoi in the rice field, his color of his skin is what? Brown. The white man walks up to the brown man. I got all this education. He's got none. I've got all this money. He's got none. I got a Cadillac. He's got flip-flops. I got, I got... I got, what I've got is a superiority attitude that that man's going to sense and is he going to receive the gospel when I preach? Because I make the gospel to stink. And this is the problem. Down here we make the gospel to stink because there is a strife among us who'd be counted the, that's not how they think up there. Now, Philippians 2, I said I would end, but I'm going to add five minutes. Philippians 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Verse 6, Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not to be what? Equal with God. Now verse 7, he made himself of no reputation, comma, and took on himself the form of what? That's how they think up there. We had a student, this is years ago, she came to our institution we have a work study, a one-year health evangelism program. It's work study. She came. She said, well, going to work my way through. No debt when you come out, right? What kind of work do I do? Well, you learn to cook. Yeah, that's good. You learn to uh, work in the garden. That's good. You learn how to clean the toilet. She said, no good. I got a question. What's wrong with cleaning the toilet? Because, dear friends, the toilet needs cleaned. <laughs> now, you think about it. I was in the airport in Hong Kong. You go into the bathroom, the toilet, you know, different names for different places. You know, there's a thing. I was six days ago, by the way, Andy, I don't know if you're watching. He's like my son. Six days ago, I was in the northern desert in Kenya with this brother. Andy, if you're watching, I love you. I miss you. And uh, good experiences. That's six days ago. We were in a refugee camp in northern Kenya, staying 
with 180,000 Sudanese and Ethiopian war refugees. For the bathroom, a concrete slab, and again, a diverse audience. You're not a bunch of people born in America and raised there with the crazy notion that the whole world is like this place. It is not. We know what it's like, don't we? There's a little hole in a concrete slab, and that's where you go to the bathroom. I don't clean those. Well, somebody's got to clean it. And a question you have to ask yourself, now we go to Hong Kong. Hong Kong, one of the richest cities on earth, right? No, one of the richest cities on the earth. I go into the, to the bathroom in Hong Kong, and there's a man there. His job is doing what? That's it. That's what he did. He's scrubbing up the toilets, washing the mirrors, and he's scrubbing things up. Same in Kingston, same in uh, Kenya, Nairobi, same everywhere, right? They got a man in there cleaning the bathrooms. Somebody's cleaning the bathrooms in this church, and they do a nice job. The paper towels never run out. Somebody's doing a good job. If everybody in the church said, well, I'm not going to do that, the one place you never want to go is where? And that's the place you got to go. <laughs> Come on. I walk into the bathroom in Hong Kong, and I see this guy. Here's your test. If you think you're one whit better or holier, that shows you need a brain do. Would you agree? We like to worship who? Men. And that is the problem. Now, Lord, what's the answer? Ah, I love the answer. John 13, verse 4. John 13. This is the man of war, right? Jesus is about to fight a battle. And when the Lord fights, he knows how to fight. He's about to fight a battle. John 13, verse 4. He took a towel and... Say it, say it loud, it starts with a G. Girded himself. That's what it says. Now, he's about to do that too, but wait. He took a towel and he girded himself. Now, pause. Luke 22, verse, 7, verse 27. Luke 22, 27. I ask you... Which is greater, he that sitteth at meat or he that serveth? Now, come on. I've been in places, uh, I, the Philippines, I lived there in 96, 97. They had, they didn't call it servants, they said helpers. So you have 35 U.S. dollars a month, you, you can pay somebody to come and they'll, you know, help you for eight hours a day. You got to give them food, a place to stay, good conditions, a day off, they help you. I walked into an engineer's house, he was a rich man, an engineer. I saw him, I never met him before, I saw him sitting at the table. No, I saw a man sitting at the table and four or five people waiting on him. Which is greater, he that sitteth, he that serveth. Who's the engineer? Who's the man of the house? The one sitting or the one serving? Sitting, of course. I said, that's the man, that's the engineer. He's the owner, because he's sitting. Four or five people running around bringing him all these things. But then Jesus said, last part, verse 27, Luke 22, I'm among you as... He that, that's how they think, up there. Next question. When Jesus took a towel and girded himself, now I'm going to jump ahead a few verses. You call me Master and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. If I, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet. Oh, what's the next part, friends? That's it. And that's communion service. God instituted that ordinance to try to bring us down off our stilts of self-exaltation and put our eyes on Him. Verse 13, verse 4, He took a towel and girded Himself. John 13, verse 15, I've given you an Example that you should do as I have done. Now, John 3, 29 and John 13, 17. Therefore, my joy is fulfilled. John said, he's going up, I'm going down. I'm finally at, at peace. I found happiness. John 13, uh, John 13, 17. Happy are ye if you do it. And that's it. It's not some kind of complicated quadratic equation that takes a PhD in mathematics to figure it out. All you have to do is say, Lord, change this brain so I think not like me, but like 
you. Why don't we stand? We'll sing our closing song. Closing song. What is our closing song anyway? What is it? What is it? Live out thy life within me. Live oh, wait a minute. That's a good song. Live out thy life within me. Is that a prayer or is that a song? Prayer. First John four, uh, First Corinthians fourteen fifteen. Sing with the spirit and sing with the understanding. Don't sing the song if you don't understand it. Only way to understand it is to sing with the Spirit. John 14, 20, um, Romans 8, 26, you know not how to pray. But what? The Spirit gives utterance. Not just in praying, but in singing. Now, I'm not going to make any kind of public invitation, I don't think. But probably somebody in here, maybe, maybe there's one in here, that you look at somebody down there cleaning the sewer in uh, Bombay, now, over there, they have the, starts with a C, what kind of system the Hindus have? Say it louder. Cast. Cast. They got the cast system, right? Who's on the top? The Brahmins. Who's on the bottom? Sewer cleaners. We got a cast system here. Who's on the top? Thank you. Who's on the bottom? And when you see somebody cleaning the toilet in Hong Kong, you know he ain't what? Rich. In uh, Bombay, you see the man down there in the sewer coming up for air, and that is a job you don't want. What kind of system, they call him an untouchable, and how long will it be one? Thank you. Because the caste system keeps him there. But Jesus said to that woman, out of whom he cast seven devils, Thy sins, Luke 7, be forgiven thee. Wherever the gospel is preached, your story is going to be told as a witness. And I'm telling it this morning. When he saw the demoniac, how many devils? He asked, the demoniac said, we are how many? Legion. That's a whole lot of devils, right? Did he need a brain do? Yes. Can Jesus count the devils? Yes. Did he get one? And the demoniac went and preached the gospel. Now the woman that had five husbands, did she get a brain do? Did she forget a water pot? Did she go out and tell all Samaria what Jesus had done for her? Do you see over and over and over Jesus changing the way people think? But today, we got problems they didn't have. We are so exalted in our own sight and have been worshiping ourselves for so long, it's going to take a miracle of grace. So here's the question this morning. You look at the guy in the sewer. And by the way, that man needs the gospel, doesn't he? Come on, that man needs the gospel. Now, you're not going to you're not going to like this question <laughs> yeah we need the gospel nobody's going to like this question i don't like it myself the best way to reach the man in the sewer is what God don't him. God don't to him. now what he just said go down there to him that's what god the father said to god the son go down there and jesus said I'll go where you want me to go. And then Jesus says to us, As my Father hath sent me, even so... I don't want to clean toilets. I don't want to tell you what the Sudanese did for me. We're going to sing just one second. What the Sudanese, when I got there, I saw something I never saw before. I got there, by the way, monsoon floods one day, desert heat the next. I got there. And they grabbed me right when I got there these war refugees. A man took me over. Of course, it had been monsoon rain, right? The wheelbarrow was full of water. Guess what he did? Washed my feet. I said, what are you doing? Of course, they don't speak this dialect. They had a translator. I said, well, we, we want, your feet are dirty. So we washed them. Is it that simple? The dishes are dirty, so we wash them. Last question. When Jesus washed the feet, was he cleaning the feet or cleaning the hearts? Was it a hairdo or a brain do? Matthew 5, verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for the meek shall inherit the earth. Matthew 5, verse 6. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall what? Be filled. Matthew 5, verse 7. Blessed are the merciful, because they shall receive what? The last one. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. Now, I would say 
Oh, if you see you need some work in your heart, come forward. Dear friends, the truth is everybody, everybody breathing in this church needs that. Would yes. you agree? Yes. Yeah, including, and like, who's, who's the chief of center in the church? I'm going to tell you. You don't mind, I'm going to tell you who. Yeah. <laughs> I say, when I've been there, 10,000 years bright, shining yeah. as the sun, there's no, come on, this days to, to sing, sing God's, God's praise. praise. Where we're first grace will get us there, and grace is going to keep us there. <laughs> we're always going to be subject to God, thank you.